everyone, and welcome back to the Dr. Music Podcast. Uh, thank you very much for my subscribers. You make all of this happen. If you are not a subscriber, please consider hitting that button so I can bring you great guests like the one I have today, Mr. Chris Slade. Chris started his career as a member of Tom Jones' band, later becoming a founding member of Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Uh, he went on to be the drummer for The Firm with Jimmy Page, Paul Rogers, Tony Franklin, uh, what a great band that was. Uh, of course, Chris spent a good amount of time as the drummer for ACDC. Uh, and that's not even mentioning the time he spent with Olivia Newton-John, Uriah Heep, David Gilmore, Asia, Gary Newman. It goes on and on and on. Uh, we'll talk about some of those things as we celebrate a new release from Chris's current band project, the Chris Slade Timeline. It's called Timescape. It's the new double record from the band. It is available now on Brave Words Records. Chris, it is an honor to have you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it is. Is there any genre that you haven't played? <laughs> it's just um, music. I don't think so. I never <laughs> did in the opera. Uh, there you go. When they get drums in the operas, you'll be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it is, I'm up for that. <laughs> it, it, it's it's astonishing. Uh, you know, and I th I I was thinking about it, and I'm thinking, you're the same man that played. It's not unusual that played "Blinded by the Light." Uh, that played "Thunderstruck." Uh, <laughs> those are drastically different ends of the spectrum uh and it's and you know i think about gary newman uh another you know electronic new wave uh how does one fit into that too uh it's great it's just amazing your your talent is uh just astonishing um did you feel like you adopted you know i hear this record and i hear a lot of an acdc type of influenced on it um it's it's on that side more than any other maybe um is there did you feel like you adopted a certain band style when you were writing the original songs for the for the record no not at all um i just did what came into my head actually um and the guys wrote a song as well the band wrote a song as well which is the second song on the album um and no i just uh i just had some ideas and i put them down and these turn out to be the best of the bunch and that's as simple as that really yeah and the same with the second side you know there is a bit of uh, acdc on that quite a lot right um but i'm quite proud of that anyway you know it's the timeline playing acdc so um you know we you know we can't be acdc but it's very close uh we've got a great singer in bun davis that does a great job of vocals and uh we've got a a bass player that sings the rest of the stuff like um uh jimmy page uh david gilmore um and uriah heap uh, Asia. So it's a, quite a diverse thing. Um, and I've, I've always sort of liked that. I like the diversity of albums. Um, it doesn't all have to be one style. I know some people like that. And if they like a band, they like the style of the band, of course. Um, but with me, my brains all over the place so uh, <laughs> so i go i go with it the way it uh has come out and, and it, it's it's a wonderful thing i i love it uh you know it's it's so great to hear well and it's you know knowing your history i i know what you have been involved with and i know you can play it and i know it sounds great and you fit right in and and so hearing this with your own band uh it it does that same thing uh you know it, it just uh it's so great um thanks uh do you feel a more ownership more freedom with something like this it's it's yours uh you've always kind of been a hired gun 
uh, you know, somebody that was brought in to enhance something that was already there, um, you know, other than Manfred Mann. Um, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, you know, um, do you feel like you have a little bit more freedom with, with this? You know, it's your music. Uh, you can oh, do most definitely, so. most definitely more freedom. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's what I mean. It felt a bit like an Earth Band album to me. Um, because we always used to, uh, albums that were really different. Each song was different. You know, that's where Blinded by the Light came from. Yeah. So, uh, was that diversity of Earth Band. Yeah. So, well, uh, you know, and, uh, I got two Earth Band songs on there. Three, actually, I think, when you come to think of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, that was a very creative time for me because we all put our uh, ideas into the band, all the members of the band, of Earth Band. And um, I always put production ideas in. Um, you know, ACDC don't particularly want production ideas. Right. <laughs> they write great songs, tremendous songs mm -hmm. um, that we all love. And... Uh, you know, they don't think much about the production around the song because they don't need to. Right. They just have their style and they stick to it. Yeah. Um, with me, I like to be uh, a little more um, production oriented. In other words, like on Time Flies, there's uh, a lot of production goes into that. Mm -hmm. A lot of production ideas. And they just grew organically, really. Yeah. They just... Uh, developed as uh, as the song was being written wow. um, and i wrote the chorus last oh, i'd wow. had uh, the whole song i thought you know what it needs it needs a chorus <laughs> um, and so i just wrote the chorus and uh, it worked yeah so i'm i'm very pleased with that yeah. and the end of eternity uh which is the last song on the first mm -hmm. side um with the the chords of that song, but with a guitar solo over the top, um, done by um, and other stuff on it, of course, uh, done by James Cornford, the guitarist, um, and uh, I think that worked. It really the ideas worked on that as well. The production of that production ideas on that, and. Uh, I'm just very proud of it, and I'm glad you like it. Thank you very as, much indeed. Yeah, as you should be. Uh, it is a great record, and it's a great band. Uh, this this band pulls pulls it off. They they they're it's, it's a great it's a great great band. Really, one of the best bands I've ever worked with musically. I um, mean, just free uh, from the second side, uh, the Asia song uh, from Aura. Um, free the guitar solo in free is just jaw dropping uh it's it's a great song um that's just played tremendously here uh it's just so good um i wanted to ask you about that one though you played on a lot of that record but you don't play on that one simon phillips played drums on that song in particular is there a story behind that one did you is that a song that you always loved from that record yeah, yeah, we play it because we love it. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter that you know, Simon is a great, great drummer. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I liked his ideas. I enhanced them a little bit. I mean, what can, you know, uh, that's the whole point. Um, and I used to play it. I play that uh, recording the same way I used to play it live with Asia. So, uh, nice. you know, we did it for, we did it for quite a long time and it was always a, a favorite on stage and quite spectacular. Mm -hmm. And when we do it, when timeline do it on stage, it's quite spectacular yeah. musically. So, uh, you know, uh, we always look forward to playing that. Yeah. Um, and it always goes down a treat. 
it, it was a standout to me. You know, they, there's a lot of songs on this. There's it's a double record. There's a lot to love, uh, but that song just is a is a real highlight for me. Uh, and I'm a you know I'm a proggy guy anyway, so you know it has some length and it has the movements in it. Uh, and that guitar solo, like I say, is is just astonishing. Is just so yeah, James is a, a great great player. Wow. You know, um, on stage, uh, we do that as I just said. But we also do, uh, most times, comfortably numb. Wow. Um, and, you know, James is not David Gilmore. He couldn't possibly be. Who could? Nobody right. in the world could be David Gilmore. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not Jimmy Page. Not trying to be serious. <laughs> but um, he plays. And I, I watch the audience faces when we start, when he starts soloing. Uh, because they're so familiar with uh, Floyd's right. um, you know. Um and uh, you can see their jaws dropping <laughs> because James does a fantastic job of it. Um and yeah. it's one of the highlights of the night. Man. And we play for two hours, wow. at least two hours, when we got the time. Um because festivals you can't play two hours. Uh Right. Often you you know it's an hour and a half maximum, um, but uh, that's for people of our uh, standard, if you like. If that's the right <laughs> word. Um, but uh, they are you know we play for usually we play for two hours and they never disappointed. They're only disappointed and they're still there after two hours <laughs> and more. Um, they only complain when I say this is the last song. Then it's a <laughs> you know. so uh you yeah. know it's it's confirmed by the audiences actually sure. and we've been together for twelve years. Yeah. Um you know, we've been recording for ten, always covers until now. Yeah. Um and uh as I said, it's one of the best bands I've ever been in. Yeah. Uh, all great musicians, all able to play um, really well. Mike Clark is the keyboard player. He's tremendous. He does all sorts of sort. Well, you can hear him, which is very different on Razor's Edge, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we put a, a keyboard solo in there, um, which is... Uh, a little bit unlike ACDC. <laughs> <Yeah>. A little. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and we do that sort of thing on stage also. Yeah. And so, that, uh, that's an adventure, you know, that makes it, uh, it makes it fun, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm still enjoying being on the road. Some people hate it. I absolutely love it. That's I've been doing great. it now for over 60 years. Wow. Um, and I still love getting in the van and driving somewhere because that's the way we travel. We don't fly. Um, we play all over Europe. We go Italy. Um, this is all within this year, maybe. Italy, Spain, um, France, Germany, Poland. We were in Poland three months ago. Czech Republic. Um wow. You and all to, points in between. You have to see so much of the world that way. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of the world all my life. Yeah. Um, sorry, Johnny Cass song. I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah, that was written for you. Uh, <laughs> it's it's great. It's great that you do that. It's great that you can do that. Uh, we're, it's so yes. We're thankful. I'm, that, a, I'm very lucky. Yeah. But there's that... Somebody said, you know, if you love your job, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. And and that's absolutely true. Uh, that's so great. That's so great. Uh the the new single, Ed Video, is a song called Back with a Vengeance. Uh yeah. I, I hear I hear Brian Johnson in there. I hear Rob Halford in there. A lot of that Judas Priest influence for me, I uh, hear in there. Really, that's a heavy, the heaviest song on the record. It's, you know, I would consider it definitely the heaviest song on the record. But it got me thinking of 
uh, you plugging you into other things, so, you know, because you've done so much. And I think, you know, what would you be like as the Judas Priest drummer? What would you be like in Iron Maiden? Or what would you be like in Tower of Power? Uh, you know, in a jazz situation. Uh, it all works for me when I start to think about it. Uh, is there a band out there that you've imagined yourself in? Um, not, not really. The closest you get to that would be, uh, and the way you're thinking, would be Weather Report. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, one of my heroes is Jacob Astorius, mm. a tremendous fretless bass player, yep. great musician. And uh, I, I actually got to play with him. I jammed with him Did once. You? Yeah. In New York City in a club. And um, we just jammed for like 20, 25, 30 minutes. Wow. With and people, people were just applauding all the way through it. You know? <laughs> and I wow. came off stage and they were kissing me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I mean. <laughs> uh you that is a ma there is a magic uh to that you know that kind of thing where uh it, it is lightning in a bottle kind of you know how does that how do those things happen that's just a magical thing right i mean yes and that, that's what we do we pedal magic actually yeah. yep um no matter which band you're in you're pedaling magic yeah um because the people are there, whether it's 10 people or 10,000 people, don't make any difference. You're still peddling magic of showbiz. Yeah. Um, and if Metallica thinks so, oh, you know, I'm not showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know Lars very well, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not showbiz. I'm heavy, man. I'm heavy. <laughs> you know, it's showbiz, man. Get yeah. over it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, now you grew up learning learning jazz, right? Like Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa. Uh, yes, you. Found... I, I went to jazz because there were no uh, notable to be heard uh, pop drummers of any kind. You didn't. Uh, you didn't get too many uh, good players with Pat Boone. I don't mean his drummer was <laughs> right. no right. good. I'm just saying that. Uh, it was never a prominent thing. Right. And, uh, you know, there were people like that who were around. And, uh, you know, don't forget, I grew up in the 50s, 1950s, mm -hmm. and it was all Frank Sinatra, and, uh, right. which is good because I like big bands anyway. I still do, and I still like jazz. I like rock. I like all sorts. You know, it's... Uh, Quite obvious. Uh, I, I've got an... <laughs> I've got an eclectic, um, uh, what can I say, musical education. Yeah, yeah. Which started with my brothers, actually. My brother, my older brother, Danny, had um, a, a, a violin. Well, it wasn't violin then. <laughs> it was wax, <laughs> yeah. which was very brittle. Records played at 78 RPM. Yep. And... Uh, I, I used to, he let me play those and he had like Elvis Presley and, yeah. uh, you know, Frank Sinatra in there. Yeah. So, you know, that was the mix in the fifties. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I went to jazz because of Buddy Rich, uh, to learn. I, I did play it a little bit. Um, but of course I didn't have any technique when I was 15 to be able to do that. Well, you you got, I mean, you got the gig with Tom Jones at sixteen, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. I did <laughs> enough that uh, we, you had. <laughs> we're from uh, the same village in South Wales, mm -hmm. and it's rather convoluted uh, the way I got the job. But um, I was working in a shoe shop, um, and one of the assistants said to me. Uh, and I knew about, uh, what they were, Tommy Scott and the Senators, they were called then. And she used to go regularly to see him. And, uh, she said, Oh, the band sacked their drummer last night. You're a drummer. You should try. I said, look, they're in their twenties. Not going to be interested in a 16 year old. 
Okay. And uh, lo and behold, an hour later, in walks a guitarist from Tommy Scott and the Centers to buy some shoes. <laughs> and I, I would have to and said, you, you haven't got a drummer, and I'm a drummer, I live by Tom. And that was it. Wow. <laughs> but, um, you know, I thought, I, it took me a while to pick up the courage to do that, because yeah. he was in his 20s, as I said, and uh, maybe right. mid-20s, and I was 16. I was a kid, yeah? Yeah. But uh, we arranged to meet. They came to my house where I had my drums set up permanently. And uh, they said, can you play the start to Walk, Don't Run, which is the Ventures hit, you know, the old Ventures hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I rattled it off because it was difficult to play in those days. Mm -hmm. I rattled it off and they said, okay, let's go to the pardon rears. <laughs> wow, awesome, awesome. D did you like the music, uh, you know, the the – Tom Jones music when you got the gig uh, or was it something that, you know, you grew into or, you know, did you take the gig just, you know, to make the extra money or you get your foot in the door or did you, did you actually like what no, they were? Um, uh, they were a rock and roll band. Okay. Tom was a rock and roll singer. Wow. It'd be, uh, it'd be Jerry Lee and Little Richard and uh, then wow. Tom would throw in a ballad perhaps, uh, which the, the crowd we played for the crowds audiences we played for uh loved that you know they they loved and we did some pop as well from the day like some beatles stuff or something um and you know it, tom was such a fantastic singer he wasn't tom jones yet right he was tommy scott still um he hadn't changed his name yet because we come from wales and everybody there is called Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, you must see this guy, Fred Smith. He's fantastic, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, so that's why he wasn't Jones in the beginning. It was his middle name. So he took that middle name. And uh, I took my middle name because my family name is Reese, R E E S. Um, and. Uh, I think we all, the whole band changed our names to our, uh, our middle names. Um, and, uh, it was, uh, we did that on Piddly Circus in London about 1964, I think, something like that. Ah. Um, so I've been Chris Slade ever since. Huh? And, uh, because Reese is also a very common name ah. <laughs> in Wales. <laughs> so it's almost as common as Jones, actually. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he became, and uh, what helped him, um, and why he changed his name was there was a movie out. Tom Finney was the star, I think, of uh, that movie, and it was called Tom Jones. Right. Very big at the time, and it was about this uh, guy going around. Uh, he, he played Albert Finney, sorry. He played a um um a guy from the sixteenth century or something running around and he was a rake, so he went around raking everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Which suited Tom Tom's image really well. I, <laughs> I must say that. <laughs> so um that's why he became Tom Jones. Yeah. And then a few years later, recorded It's an Unusual, and that was the start of everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, crazy uh, career he's had as well. Um, it lasted about seven years. You In that time, you play Madison yep. Square Garden uh, with Count Basie's Rhythm Section. Uh, no, Count Basie Orchestra. Yeah, the Count Basie Orchestra at Madison Square yep. Garden. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then of course, you know, I see clips of you in Madison Square Garden with ACDC. Uh, you know, there there are people that dream of you know that is the top of the mountain for so many. Uh, playing Madison Square Garden like that. Uh, what was that like in your twenties to to come into a venue like that with Count Basie? Uh, it had to be a, a big memory for you. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I think we were there for a week actually. Wow. Um, and it was tremendous. Uh, you know, I realized I was at Madison Square Gardens and uh, 
which, as you say, is uh, the epitome of somebody's career sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it holds about, I don't know, ten or 20,000, I think. Yeah. Uh, but with ACDC, the last time I was out with them, 15, 2015 and 2016, mm-hmm. we were playing 80,000 people a night. <laughs> it's just insane. <laughs> I, yes. You know, when, when you're doing that, you have these gigs and you've played just amazing. I mean, you, you're sitting behind icons uh legends that you know the biggest legends that have walked the earth um is is there one particular is there a gig that you know does it get to be you know uh, another eighty thousand? uh <laughs> or is there one that stands out to you um they were always of a standard acdc never do a bad gig they never have yeah. um nothing ever goes wrong except once uh when the equipment w- wouldn't work properly that's once in like 50 years or something you know that's uh in- unbelievable and they're always on time uh, they, if they're supposed to be on at eight o'clock they're on at eight o'clock well, and nothing it, gets in the way it, um me, is there yeah go ahead and and you know is there is there um, any particular one Sander, I think, um, although it wasn't a stadium, it was festival, Donington stood out mm-hmm. to me. Live that got Donington. recorded. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can actually see that one. That is available. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, it's still, still available. Um, yeah. And uh, I think it's, um, and I've been told by many people, it's the, the best live recording uh, ever made of a band. Um you know, it was done in film, wasn't done in video. Uh, so it's of great quality and the sound is fantastic and everybody plays their ass off. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. But they always, I, they always do with ACDC. You know, Every and night I, you I, play your ass off. <laughs> that, that, that's just so great. And, it, and there, I mean, I've seen the, the band many many times and and it's just a it, it's a it's a power thing and it, it's a you get your adrenaline going and you know you can tell uh all of that comes through the music it's so great um but you, tell me when when because you did the the axel rose thing um he yeah. has known to be not on time uh not easy to work with um <laughs> there had to be some doubts uh when, what were your thoughts when when you heard that there was there was doubt from me um i said axel rose you gotta be kidding i right. uh, no, he's thinking of all those things um i shook his hand and thought this guy's all right and when he started to sing it was like wow uh, he can really sing up there man yeah. Um, I was very surprised because I only ever heard the uh, Guns N' Roses voice, you know? Right. I was extremely surprised. And he was never late, never once late, um, even for rehearsals, always on time. He said on stage once with Guns N' Roses, when he went back with Guns N' Roses, he said, uh, when I was with ACDC, I was taking the boot camp. Because they said to me, Axel, if you screw up, you get the boot. <laughs> yeah, I, and he and he came through, uh, which you know I yeah. had doubts when I when I saw that announcement. Me I too. Said, uh, I don't know. That's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, it turned out to be a, a great idea. You know, he's not Brian, and Brian's not him. Well, right. uh, he didn't try to be Brian, or he didn't even try to be Bon. You know, yeah, yeah. He he was Axel Rose singing with ACDC, and he has great respect for ACDC, yeah. and and Bon Scott and Brian, of course, as well. Yep. Um. So you know, he was, uh, and he always told he was always telling stories or telling jokes or something. You know, you don't think of Axel Rose like that, do you? Right. Um, right. But yeah. he was. Uh, he said, you know, he he did a fantastic job. Yeah. Um, it's a shame Brian wasn't there, uh, but he's back with uh, the band now. Uh, yeah. And I think that's great. And I think he's doing a great job. They're all doing a great job. Yeah. Um, 
I know the the drummer, Matt uh, Log, because oh. I used to know him when I lived in California. Um, I met him a few times when we were there, and uh, he's a he's a really nice guy, and uh, I know he's doing a great job. Wow. Uh, Excellent, and uh, you know that's just the way uh, the cookie crumbles, like. Yep. Uh, Slade, you didn't get the job. No, I didn't get another call, but there you go. That's down to Angus. It's not if yeah. he wants somebody else, he gets somebody else. Yeah. And it's the same for any leader of any band. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not bitter or twisted or any of that. <laughs> I'm quite happy that uh we got this timeline album out. Yes. And uh, now I'm taking a chance with the uh with the market, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's great. And, and, you know, I think about the Timeline record, and, and I hear Joybringer, and I hear questions from, from the Manford Man era. Uh, great songs. Um, these songs are on the first record, the first disc. Uh, what, was it, what was the decision to put those on the first disc as opposed to the second disc? Well, I, I wrote the lyrics, so to me, that's original. <laughs> hmm? um, I wrote the lyrics for both songs. And they've both been hits before, but 50, 60 years ago, you know. So I thought this generation has not heard those songs. So yeah. maybe they'd be hits again. Who knows? They might like them again. Yeah. Um, and they're both classical melodies. Um, even though they were done by Earth Band, they both, one is Gustav Holst, Joybringer. Um, and the, the other one is, uh, let me think, I've got to think, Schubert's third impromptu. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I've got it on the, um, uh, on the, uh, record. I put Schubert's third racket. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, a throwback to Faulty Towers and ah, Basil yes. Faulty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, his wife says, and turn that racket off. He said, "It's Brahms. It's Brahms' third racket." <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, you you have an original song here called "Freedom Song." Um, there's a huge female voice in this. There's a choir in this. Uh, it's a song that speaks about changing the world. Um, yep. it, it sounds like one that would probably sit very close to your heart um is is there a track on the record that that means a little bit more than the others is is this the one um if it was any of them i would say time flies okay because that just started with from an idea of going i wonder if i can get an echo going and it sprung from there and it just developed from just those Two notes going da da di da di da di da, da and wow. I thought, wow. And it just grew and grew and it became a song and and then you know, and then I thought, Oh well, I wouldn't mind and it just grew organically and became that song. Uh I I won't say too much about it, but uh, you know, when when it stops and the production ideas take over, I'm quite proud of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's uh, of course it can never happen with yeah, without David Gilmore, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's uh, it's to me it's just uh, it it says it all uh, to me. That's some of my favourite music. So uh, I enjoyed making that. Uh, the guys played fantastic on it, the, the timeline band and. Uh, 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 as you said about with James Comfort playing his guitar when he plays it, you know he's playing it. Yeah, you know he's <laughs> and, playing. Uh, my God, you know what a great player, and he's like that live also. As I say, I yeah. just I just watch people's faces because um, I know what the reaction is going to be. Even yeah. the the up tempo ones when he starts playing an up tempo solo, say. Um, it's like, geez, what, what is, who is this guy? You know, <laughs> they've never heard of him. 
right and right. uh and then he comes out with his uh magic stuff yep pedaling magic mm. that's what you're doing for sure uh, back to that magic again yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah no doubt um you know i i think of all these stories that you you have to have uh playing with so many greats and and you know all these great bands musicians and the places you've been and the travels uh have you ever thought about tell do do you journal uh do you write these some things down every day or every week or uh and yeah. would, you, would you consider uh, doing an autobiography telling your stories yes it's um virtually written but i've been writing it for about 20 years <laughs> to be um so uh it'll come out one day in if i'm not here it'll come out <laughs> and uh i think it's uh quite enjoyable it might be three volumes actually i'm not sure yeah. i don't know how, how many words you need for a book but um i haven't looked into that yet but um it just needs collating now. I got half of it done. Well, I finished. Uh, I finished a section uh, just a few weeks back, um, and I hadn't got out of the sixties yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, I mean, I and you know, I think you know, I have you here, and I'd love to go through all of that stuff. But it, you know, we're talking about you know, ten, twelve, fourteen hours, twenty-four hours of just stories uh you know it's just it's insane what you know like you know with the, just the firm alone you have you know three legendary players that you're playing with uh you know that's a story in itself uh yeah yeah you know, um just you know being with jimmy page i'm sure you know working with him uh you get stories from that, uh, Paul Rogers, one of the great voices uh, that's ever walked the earth. Uh, yeah, I agree. Just you know, uh, so you know that that has to be uh, a tremendous uh, a, a honor to be considered among all of these people. Uh, you know, absolutely. And I always think of it's a, it's an honor. I really do, honestly. Uh, honor and a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same as playing with ACDC, honor and a privilege, you know? Yeah. Um, and they're all. And, uh, I, you. I mean that. I mean that. Yeah. And you, like I say, they're they're lucky to have you. Uh, you are one of those legends, uh, for sure. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, boy, would I love to hear, uh, you know, your your take on all of that and you know um your your, your stories i can't wait for for that to uh to come about to be collated and and be uh presented it would uh i'm so looking forward to that for sure yeah, i wanted to write it myself you know in my own words mm -hmm. and uh some people have heard it my missus has, has read it you know and uh she thinks it's all right and I, she would tell me if it's not yeah. <laughs> and, I, I, and I would get a ghostwriter in, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I want to do it without a ghostwriter. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed Keith Richards' book, um, but that was a ghostwriter also. Right. Um, but I really enjoyed it because it sort of mirrored my experiences because, you know, we're from the same time. My first professional gig with Tom Jones was supporting the Rolling Stones. Really? Wow. When they first came out with a record, it was a Chuck Berry record called Come On. Mm -hmm. And uh, they weren't writing together yet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this uh, that was my first <laughs> uh, journey into rock music business. Um, boy, so, I, I'm uh, 16, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was about 17 when that happened, yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, that's that, like I say, uh, you have to have so many of those, uh, to, you know, and, and one thing that gets overlooked is the tomorrow, uh, the group, uh, with Olivia Newton, John, what was that experience like? It was great. Livy was a really nice person. Um, it was a movie project. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in the movie, uh, 
another guy did that, uh, who was supposed to be the drummer of the band, so to speak, but he, he wanted to leave, so he left. And I was the replacement for him to do promotion and live shows. Well, we didn't do any live shows. We just did um, promotion. Okay. Uh, we rehearsed. So we rehearsed as a band, but we did no shows. Um, and, you know, you got paid uh, because paid just like movie projects, uh, projects paid. You know, they pay very, very well. Right. So, uh, and I knew the keyboard player. He used to work with uh, with Tom. Um, and, you know, it was a good experience. Yeah. And I, uh, it, we only lasted about six, nine months, I think. I can't, don't think it was much longer than that. Yeah. And it was Livy's first time to be um, in Britain. And uh, she went from strength to strength because she was a great singer. Yeah. And, uh, and a, a really nice looking lady. And, uh, you know, she, she did really well. She was big in Britain before she was big anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a really great experience. And we rehearsed, as I say, a few times. That's all. And that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that's, you know, is the things you experience in your life, you know, those uh, those little things, uh, you know, a, a day here, a day there. It's uh, it's pretty pretty great. You've had so many. I've heard a story uh, on the It's Not Unusual session. Uh, there's There's always that thing where you know jimmy page played guitar on there and uh yeah. you know uh but the band was without their regular keyboard player and you went across the street and hit up a guy named reginald dwight is that a is that a true story yes very true um wow. we were recording uh squires this was the squires recording without tom uh, trying to do a solo record for us, and the keyboard player didn't turn up. It's that keyboard player I just mentioned with uh, with Livy. He didn't ah, show, okay. and uh, so um, I went. Uh, there's a place in Denmark Street in London, which is a, a street about a hundred yards long, but it's like world famous. Mm -hmm. uh, it's known as Tin Pan Alley. Ah, yes, and. Uh, it's the original Tin Pan Alley, by the way. Huh? America took the name from the British one. Um, and uh, and I'll go on to that in a bit more in a minute. Uh, so I went across the street to this place. It was called the Driaconda. It's no longer there. And it was a coffee shop. And it's where all the musicians used to meet if they're looking for work. So I, I opened the door and I put my head in the door and just went, any keyboard players in there? And it was a tiny place, you know. And uh, this skinny uh, kid got up, about the same age as me, and uh, ginger air. <laughs> and uh, he said, I'm a keyboard player. I said, well, can you do a session across the street? We'll give you your 10 quid, your 10 pounds, you know. Which is what the going rate was for three hours in those days, <laughs> and uh, he said, "Yeah, sure." So we he came across the street. So we played the track uh, in about. We did it on about hour and a half or something. And uh, at the end of that, I said, "Oh, you know, just be friendly." I was saying, "You know, what's uh, uh, what are you doing?" Oh, I'm a singer songwriter. I've just signed a deal with. Uh, I've forgotten who it said. Um, I thought it was Northern Songs, but maybe it's not. Yeah. And uh, uh, I said, oh, okay, mate. We hadn't got round to this yet. I said, oh, what's your name? He said, oh, Reg. Reg Dwight. Yep. <laughs> A few months later, he changed his name to Elton John, <laughs> of course. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, you know, it, again, uh these stories, you know, the, the, the things you've seen, the things you've heard, uh, just, just great. Um, it, it's so, so, so fun to hear about the, these things. Uh, is there something you've always wanted to do? You've done so much. Uh, is there something you've always wanted to do and haven't yet? No, I just regret 
not playing for Elvis Presley when he asked me to. That's about the the only thing. Sorry, Elvis, I'm too busy, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Tom didn't like it at all that I that Elvis had asked me to play drums for him, and um, and because he thought I would, you know, leave sort of thing. Um, so I'm what I really should have left. But um, I think that, uh, I couldn't make rehearsals for the thing. And then they said, oh, we'll get somebody else in. You can step in after. I said, okay. And that guy they got in was Ronnie Tut, okay. who was with him ever since. Yeah. Um, and it was going to be a month in Vegas, just a month show. That was it. Um, and then uh, just at the last thing, they said, uh, they being uh, Joe Esposito, who was Elvis's right hand man, and Elvis said, "Well, look, we're, we'll we're using this drummer, but um, you come in and we'll have two drummers, because that was quite a trend back then in the sixties to have two drummers on stage. Right. Um, so then it was going to be me and Ronnie Tut on stage, <sighs> but I couldn't make the last rehearsal, and I think Tom's management went to Colonel Tom Parker and said." You, know, you can't steal our drummer. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah. the funny thing is, I I got really pissed off with Tom at the end, uh, uh, a couple of years, uh, maybe 18 months later, and I left anyway. Um, wow. I was just uh, unenamored, shall I say, with the yeah. way uh, the organization had treated me. So I just walked out. Yeah. And my contract had come to an end, so there was no reason to stay. I saw Tom after, and I've seen him since. I uh, saw him a few years ago in Los Angeles, actually, and we had a chat. Nice. Um, but, uh, you know, that turned into then Man From Man's Earth Band, so you never know when... When one door closes, the other one slams shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I thought about that. I, I mean, if you take that gig, we might not have the firm, Manford Man, uh, ACDC with you. Uh, you know, it might have, you know, just consumed your whole entire career. And, and that would have yeah. been great, too. But, uh, you know, we wouldn't, you know, there, everybody has the path. And, uh, you know, you your chosen path has been Pretty, pretty spectacular. Uh, no well, doubt about it. Yeah, I'm very grateful for whatever happened there to allow that to happen and the diverse people I've played with. Yeah. I'm uh, very happy as a drummer. Very happy. So great to hear. So great to hear. Uh, Timescape, uh, new double record. It's out. Uh, Brave Words Records, Chris Slade. Oh, Thank you. It's here. Thank you. That is it. Yes. And the timeline, uh, tour dates, are you coming over to the States? I would love to. We would love to. Yeah. Um, the problem being, we worked all over Europe, everywhere. Um, the problem being visas, of course, work visas, yeah. um, which uh, you know, are very hard to get, especially in the time that you want them. And there's been horror stories of the visas coming in two months after the tour yeah. has finished or supposed to have finished and that's happened more than once yeah. um and uh, the prime minister of britain somebody said about allowing uh people uh creatives like dancers actors you know all that sort of anything creative uh musicians songwriters uh he said how about uh, somebody put to him how about doing that for you know like worldwide just uh giving the creatives ballet dancers for instance right. um the creatives uh a license just uh if you are a creative you can go and that guy boris johnson said don't be so ridiculous so it wasn't his priority you know yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. which is a great shame yeah it is because uh, uh because Americans can come to Britain to work, but Britons can't go to America to work without visas. Yeah, yeah, 
Ah, yeah, that, and that, yeah, uh, you can get them, but uh, like you say, uh, it's uh, it, it's difficult. It's time consuming, uh, costly. I would oh, yeah. so and expensive, right? For for smaller bands, you know, it, it's uh, right. It's, they, they can't afford it. They just can't afford it. Right. Right, yeah, uh, it's a shame. Uh, but we would love to love to have you here. Uh, I would love to be there. I would love to be. I've lived in the states a couple of times. Yeah, um, I lived in California, and my missus and I lived in Las Vegas, actually. All right. Um, so, because um, I've got a green card, but the the rest of the band have to rely on visas. All right. Right. Yeah. So. You know, I would love to come, but uh, people don't understand that. I know you do, but some people say, well, why don't you come to America? You go, well, you've got to have an invitation <laughs> right. from a promoter, you know, and it costs a lot of money. A promoter, yeah. it costs a lot of money. you got to buy accommodation. you got to buy food. you got to buy all the rest of it. And yeah. uh, the public don't understand that. They think you can just go... Sap your fingers and go. Oh, I'm. I think I'll go to the states this weekend. I'm not. Uh, right. You know, I feel like going to the states. <laughs> and everything's going to be um, set up for you to play, and you know, yeah, yeah, of course. And, you know, <laughs> of course. And you, uh, that's right. And you do play for free, don't you? Because you love it, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, How but, am I going to eat? <laughs> Boy, we would we sure do hope it happens. Uh yeah, it, it is great. It's great to have this record. Thank you so much for doing it. Uh and and thank you for your all the music you've given us. Uh it is so special to us. It's such an honor to talk to you, Chris. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. That was uh that's really nice. Thank you. Yes. All right. Bye for uh, now. Yes, and uh yeah, let's do it on the next record. Or the or the the release yeah. the release of the autobiography first volume. Yeah. Well, I've been a professional for sixty years. I'm just looking forward to the next sixty now. You know? There you go. Absolutely. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> All right, care, my friend. Be well. Thanks. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.